this is the last subject uh, we need to discuss in, in this uh, solid mechanics. And this subject is considered as the little high level uh, subject, and but very important in understanding uh, uh, structural behavior and very important to design structures. Okay, uh, I will uh, first of all define what does this buckling means. What is buckling? Does anybody know about buckling? Uh, in Korean, we call jagul. In Chinese, should be saying jagul. I don't know how to write down in Chinese. Anybody can write down in uh, jagul? <coughs> Anybody can write in jagul in, in Chinese? Nobody? Well, anyhow, it's a uh, buckling, and okay, I will use uh, some figures to better explain what does the juggle means. Well, as you can see here, in in uh, real uh, design of structures, uh, buckling behavior is very critical. Okay. Well, this is the A column, okay? This is the A column. And when it's subject to a compressible load, a key word is a compressible load. Always is, it happens when subject to a compressible load. When it's compressible load, of course, the, the uh, structure is compressed. Uh, compressed, the uh, compressible strain, uh, which can be simply uh, calculated uh, by uh, stress divided by Young's modulus. Epsilon equal stress divided by Young's modulus. And that's the amount of a contraction we can expect. But in slender member, we call column, okay? Slender member subject to a compressible load, we call column, okay? Column has another behavior than just compressed, which is called uh, buckling. And say uh, this paper, okay, we simply apply tension. Okay, when we apply tension and I apply 10 Newton. And this structure can support this tensile load very well, very stable. What does it mean, stable? Well, whenever we apply load, and this load, uh, let's say we a uh, little bit deviate, and the structure is a stay there. But we apply the same amount of this load, 10 Newton, in compressive way. Can you apply? No, structure cannot support this same 10 Newton. This structure simply, this behavior is called buckling, okay? Structure cannot support in compressive way. Well, I'm sure you have noticed this behavior and you are very much used to this behavior, but you simply uh, I mean, the, this behavior is buckling. This terminology is quite new to you, but this is the buckling, okay? So uh, this buckling behavior uh, happens not just paper, but any structure. It is structure like this kind of, uh, in this building, we have a lot of columns, and the columns support to a, a lot of compressible force, and the column may buckle. And this chapter, we will study uh, the, uh, how and why this column uh, buckles. 
and uh, before we introduce the column a slender member I, I would like to uh, introduce the concept of uh, stability I just demonstrate the stable stability means that is uh, uh, the structures become stable or unstable and the concept is uh, is very much similar to uh, these demonstrations there is a ball okay on the top of the mountain and this ball you can just put it there equilibrium it is in the equilibrium means that it can it may stay there but it is unstable what is the difference between equilibri equilibrium and unstable equilibrium means that it may stay there but it does status is very unstable meaning that when whenever you apply small amount of a force it simply don't it doesn't want to stay there it simply deviates from these positions either this way or that way it is called unstable compared to this one uh, take a look at this situation there's a pole in the, the bottom hill and this is the again equilibrium but this is a stable equilibrium stable equilibrium means that let's say you have a little bit of a deviations from these positions it always tend to go its original positions we deviate from here then it tends to go to a, a original a position right so this is the uh, structure is very stable and again this is the unstable this is the difference between unstable and and stable same concept applied to a structure same concept and take a look at these structures and if we apply tension okay if we apply tension then the structure is very stable stable means that if we apply the load we just deviate a little bit it always tend to uh, original configurations this way or that way is very much stable but if we reverse the force in other words compressive the same magnitude but only difference is attraction compressive then whenever you are trying to uh, uh, deviate just a little bit it just uh, you know collapse it be, it's called very unstable right very unstable and this is the column buckling and another example is like that you we have a beam which is a pre-bent already bent and whenever we push this one and then it it is certainly uh compressed and then it become very unstable and once uh, very unstable it suddenly change its configuration to the other way <coughs> that is the another uh, example of an unstable structure another one is that this kind of a beam bending is a, a vertically is very uh, slender compared to with this and subject to a, a uh, uh, force vertical force and then whenever we trying to bend like that it will bend and then at a certain point it become very unstable and then it, it, it deviate this way or that way uh, you can imagine this kind of a behavior right uh, is anybody has a long slender pen okay well the same uh, as this one and again we we just apply tension load it's very unstable and very stable right 
if we load a little bit deviate, it always it doesn't uh, deviate too much. But we just reverse the force and same amount of load. Uh, Same amount of load we apply and it easily buckle, right? Easily buckle. I didn't make it to bend. It, this structure is simply cannot support, it, 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 prepare, it prepares to bend, uh, buckle like that. This is called buckling. But another point is that this may buckle this way or that, that way or this way, and we don't know. It's totally unpredictable. Okay, that's why it is another uh, mathematical expression is the bifurcation, uh, bifurcation theory or whatever is uh, some uh, uh, complication is involved. But point is that it's very unstable. Another demonstration is this one. This structure means that it already prevent like that, okay? It has a prevent. This is the original structure. And now I'm trying to uh, push at the center and, and downward. And initially it's okay. But if we push it harder, it become very unstable. And then it just, you know, become unstable and go in downward. I didn't push that much. It just whenever it reaches some point, it just, you know, uh, jump to a, a different configuration. Meaning that it, it becomes very unstable. It, it doesn't want to stay there. Doesn't want to stay uh, here. Uh, the reason is uh, simple. The reason is that since the original configuration is like that, whenever I push it, this, sub, this structure will be subject to compressible load, right? As the more I push in, and it becomes subject to a lateral uh, compressions, right? So it also caused by compressions. And this, this demonstrations, it's a hard to, thank you, hard to uh, show, but let's say we have a beams with a uh, relatively, uh, a slender member in vertical directions, and whenever we I push it this way, it simply buckles like that, okay, or buckles like that. Why does it happen? Why is relator compressive? The the uh, re reason is simple. Whenever we push down, and this part, the uh, the bottom part is subject to compressible load. Do you remember that stress, stress, uh, stress, linear stress distributions? And bottom part is subject to a compressible load. Whenever we apply the load, I mean bending moment, then the simply the stress will be applied like that. So uh, approximately, this one is approximately, this one is the tension and this is the compressions. So this bottom part is subject to a sort of a compressible load and this become, uh, these structures become very unstable in this uh, compressive zone and it doesn't want to stay there and it simply deviate from uh, original configurations. So all this, this behavior, that behavior, this behavior is uh, somehow, somewhat relate to a compressive load. Okay, compressive load. Another demonstration which I did in, when we learn about uh, the uh, shear, okay. The tension is okay, compression is the uh, buckle. How about the, uh, how about the, uh, shear. Whenever we apply shear force, it simply, can you see the wave, wave of this paper? This wave goes in 45 directions. Do you see that? 
Why is that? Okay, I apply the shear. I mean, this is not exactly the shear, but very close to a pure shear. Whenever we apply shear, and you can see the, how the wave goes. And that wave, again, as I explained, all the buckling is related to a compressive. So whenever we apply to a shear like that, well, we, we uh, missed this one. Shear like that, and y y you know the pure shear, pure shear is this uh, Mohs circle, and in 45 direction, which is 90 direction here, this is the tension and compressions, which means that this one is, is identical to uh, tension and compressions. We study uh, this subject, right? So uh, when I apply this one, you see the uh, buckling like that, wave. The reason is that simply in 45 direction, we have a compressive load. So that's why we in, in compressive direction, we have a buckling. So in other words, pure, pure shear is, is a, somewhat has compressive load in 45 directions. So it's okay to say that always the structure subject to compressive load will have a buckling. And shear load has also buckling in 45 directions. And this one is a pure shear is okay. This bending cylinder subject to a, this lower part is subject to a compressive show us the buckling. And this one, whenever we push in the length so, uh, 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 simply decrease so subject to a compressive and become unstable. Okay, so uh, uh, all this kind of a structure is uh, is the uh, uh, buckling related behavior, and we can make a use of this kind of a behavior. Say, making you know a switch electric switches. And whenever we push in, uh, we want sudden change of a configuration rather than greater electric detachment, which is not good for, for electric switch. Whenever we push in, if we gradually detach, then the electric, uh, there will uh, cause a lot of a spark, right? But whenever we push in, it suddenly detach and touch, detach and touch, right? So that's how we make a switch. Inside there is a, a little spring type, uh, this kind of bending, bent uh, structure, and we, we uh, use the buckling behavior. Okay, so uh, again, all these kind of structures is uh, related to a very much unstable. Okay, it doesn't want to stay there. It prefers to go change its configurations to uh, other status. Now, let's try to uh, uh, calculate calculate buckling load. What is the buckling load? Well, again. You know, the buckling happens, okay, we push in, push in, push in, it, it, it compress, compress, compress a little bit, just compressive. And then when this force reaches certain point, then it becomes really unstable and doesn't want to stay there and it just simply buckle. That is called critical buckling load, okay? It does not buckle at the very beginning. It does buckle at certain magnitude. Okay, very important concept. And very simply, this delta is the uh, transverse displacement versus vertical load. And when we push in, and there will be no delta there. It's simply axial, axial contractions. 
which means we have a zero delta. So uh, starting from here, whenever we apply the buckling, I mean the force compressive load, there is a no uh, lateral displacement, only compressive, uh, just a little bit, and then going going up, up, up. Right? There is no delta, up, up, and then at certain point it become very unstable and wants to uh, deviate from its original configuration. It may go that way or that way, we don't know. Unpredictable. So definition of a P, critical, critical load, during the gradual increase of a compressible load, the value of the compressible load at the at the instant, when is the instant? When lateral deformation occurs. Lateral deformation occurs. Once lateral deformation occurs, what will happen is that this P is applied to actually here because the P always follow follows the structure and this distance p times delta p times delta which generate moment right bending moment and the certain structure and it increased more deflections and p comes here oops there is a more moment and in it, it deflect more and just go to a uh, uh, unstable. Okay, and imagine that if this is the positive force. Okay, positive force, and simply the moment is a reverse, and it, it changes back to here, and moment is still there, and back to here, and it tend to go to original configuration. is critical point, okay? Well, in this buckling, uh, I'm sure we will have uh, some equation how to calculate this buckling load, but more importantly, you need to understand the concept of the buckling. Pictures demonstrating buckling. See, this is the tower crane. You know the tower cranes? Long tower cranes uh, which um, lift up heavy uh, stuff when we build in a lot of buildings. And this tower crane is, is a most uh, uh, equipment. But you have heard several times there was a collapse of a tower crane, right? Why does it happen? Does it because of a, uh, too much load or material failure, uh, like you know, bomb misses criterion or something? Actually, it is not. What happened is that, let's say, we have this, this was the uh, vertical, and simply is subject to some compressible load, and take a look at the each bar. You cannot see well, but um, well, you, you got the idea, and then I will back to uh, this slide and uh, explain the collapse of the uh, tau crane. And we have a tau cranes like that. <coughs> and there is always balance weight because we have a moment here, moment is, is trying to balance. Anyhow, when it happened, when the collapse happened, 
what's happening is that let's say this member okay this member if we magnify this is a simply subject to a compressible load this structure will simply as a subject to a tension load because this one will subject to a bending am i right and this one again is subject to a tension and this subject to a uh, sub subject to a compressive so this member pay attention to this member and is subject to a compressive load and this member rather than it fails by its strength is simply buckle because this member is subject to a compressive load. It may uh, support a certain amount of this much force, but this force beyond this critical is simply buckles like that and become very unstable. It happens to uh, this structure that cause uh, you know, uh, this collapse and whole cranes is collapse. Okay, so as this is a simple demonstration, but it happens almost every structure, like a wing, airplane wing, it has the, uh, uh, let's say we have uh, too many passengers and wing, and this wing will bend like that, and upper skin will subject to a compressive, and bottom skin will subject to tension, right? Is like that, right? And this upper skin subject to tension, and the, the this upper skin simply too much compressed, subject to too much compress, and it buckles, and whole structure will uh, collapse. So most of the structure, the failure mostly started by a uh, buckling in local wise, local wise and then it leads to global collapse. Tower crane, airplane, and even automobiles, and many, many structures. So uh, understanding of this buckling behavior in structure is critical. OK? So now point is that how to calculate this buckling. Uh, another point is that, well, you, we can simply calculate this sigma x, p over a, okay? And as far as we know, we, this should be less than yield strength, right? But yield strength, in, 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 if we plot this magnitude, p equal a times sigma yield strength, this value is up there. This is the P, I would say, yield. And this P yield is much, much larger than critical buckling. Which means that if you design a column using this one, it's not good, right? The structure will buckle much, much lower load than this one, and it start buckle and become unstable and collapse. The whole whole structure will collapse. Okay, that's the uh, kind of a relation between this critical and this yield strength related force. Okay, now this uh, l l let's try to solve what is the uh, critical load. Okay, critical load. Now we need a, a little bit of a mathematical equation here. And imagine that, okay, this is the, uh, just for uh, convenience, we change it to a coordinate like that. This is the x in, in horizontal direction. And subject to a lateral, lateral di distribution, the same as the, the uh, beam theory we used to drive the equilibrium equations, and 
but again, there is the additional force, which is the uh, compressive load, P, which we didn't consider in driving beam theory. Now, let's, let's try the beam theory with by considering this P compressive load. OK. So uh, this is exactly the same as before. We have a P, P, do you remember? We have a, a Q here, and we have a V here, a V here, right? And we have actually V plus del V here. And moment plus uh, the uh, uh, D moment, and here we have the moment. And we have uh, two equilibrium equations. And one, uh, what is that? Well, it's simply w y directions equilibrium give us, uh, give us um, this is, should be zero, and this one simply V plus V plus Q uh, dx. I mean, V V disappear, and D V plus D Q dx equals zero, right? This is the vertical equilibrium equation. And moment equilibrium, what do we have? We have this V times dx cause the moment. And this should be, say, uh, should be uh, uh, same as the increment of moment, and which give us the moment equilibrium. That's the, the conventional uh, beam equilibrium equation. Right? OK. Now, at this, um, this time, we didn't consider compressible load. What does, what does this compressed load change in equilibrium equation? See, we have a P here. We have a P here. Same magnitude P is applied to these structures. And we assume there is a certain deflection. And let's take a look at the, the uh, uh, moment uh, uh, equilibrium. Uh, well, this is the, not the x equilibrium. This is the y and x. And this is, should be a y directional force equilibrium means that simply we have a V plus dV and we have V here, right? V, V plus dV, and simply we Qx, so uh, same as before. It has nothing to do with whether we have a transverse, I mean, a longitudinal P here. Now, Moment equilibrium, moment equilibrium, well, we need to consider this moment and this moment, okay, this, we have this moment and this moment and this moment and moment simply disappear because of, uh, and this is the incremental dm that's the one moment. And V times, this is, we have a V, V times, okay, I will uh, write down here, dm plus V dx. That was all for uh, the case when we do not have any compressive load. But see, we have a P here, we have a P here. This two, this is a P, this is a P. Those two P has certain distance. V dis, I'm uh, sorry, this is not uh, shear force. This is a deflection. And what does it cause? This P, P, dV cause moment, right? This one cause the moment which is a simply P times dV. 
That's the one term we need to additionally consider. Okay? There, you guys, pay attention here. Right? So uh, we have this one, and, and th these three terms should be in equilibrium. And if we divide by dx, we have this, this, and this. And this one is the moment and curvature relations, and this is the same as before. Moment ei v double prime. And if we combine them, combining means that, okay, V, uh, v and V, we eliminate the V here and put, put it here and M, you, you put it here. And, and then we come up with this E, I, V, 1, 2, 3, 4 plus P, V, 1, 2, equal Q, X. Okay, that is new, new governing equations. Pay attention to here, we didn't have this term. Now we have P here, which is a compressible load. And there is twice derivative plus Qx. This is a new term. And this is the carbon equation for a column or a beam subject to a compressible load. And you may apply any transverse load, which is also a function of an x. And then you can solve this. The order is what? Force order. You can solve this differential equation. And how many constant do you have? You're going to have a full integration constant, and you need full boundary condition, and you can solve it. OK? So uh, that's the big difference between, uh, between with and without uh, this term. This is the uh, compressive terms. Now. Well, what does buckling condition means? Well, when we apply this compressible load, we do not have any transverse load. So simply Q equals 0. And the carbon equation is a simplified, a simplified like that. And how to solve this differential equation? Well, since we have a four times derivative, second times derivative, we can integrate twice without any difficulty. You can integrate, this is the 4 and 3 and 2, and this will be a 2 and 1 and, and 0. And we will have a constant and a linear term, right? We just integrate twice. OK? OK, so uh, up to this much is OK. But next one is, can you integrate one, one more time? No, we cannot integrate one more time because we have a twice derivative. We have a v there. So, uh, But we do know that we how to solve these differential equations. Second derivative and, and just, so solution will be just a homogenization solution plus a particular solutions. Well, what is the particular, what is the homogene, uh, homogeneous solution? Always differential equation, the solution consists of two parts. What is the particular solution? Particular solution is that considering this one, any solution which satisfies this, well, they simply another linear term. Put in put this linear function into here. Double derivative, this term will disappear, right? 
and put it here will be linear and left and right and they will be linear so uh, this one linear function will be a particular solution and a homogeneous solution is that it, let's say we have a zero there then what is the general solution well we do know that the general solution is the consists of a sine and cosine right sine and cosine and the simply here p over ei x is missing here and x is here so uh, you need to know this is the general solution to uh, this fourth order differential equation sine cosine and constant plus linear now Again, we, even for this equation, how many integration constant do we have? We have a 1, 2, 3, 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. How many boundary conditions do we need? Four boundary conditions. We still need a four boundary conditions. And for instance, this is the clamped, and this is the free, and what is the boundary conditions? And at x equals 0 and x equals L, we simply have deflection is a 0 and a sim, uh, a slope is a 0. And right hand side, moment is a 0. Right, shear force is a 0. The same as before. And So V equals zero, okay, moment equals zero means that E I V double prime equals zero. So uh, curvature will be zero. Now V equals zero, okay, V equals zero means that is a little different. V now the V as you can see here, V is given minus M prime minus P V prime. And back to here, so V equal minus M prime and minus P V prime. And moment is given, moment was given E I V double prime minus P V prime. I'm sorry. And there's a prime there, there's one more prime. Remember, the, uh, if we don't have a compressive load, V was a simply minus EI V three times derivative, right? But now, because of this P, we have additional terms that you, you, you shouldn't forget. Okay, so uh, this is not. Uh, so uh, this is the wrong, and curvature is a zero, and this term, okay, this term should be zero. And this one, two, um, three, four, give us, this is the, uh, Let's say uh, x equals 0 and v equals 0. Put the x equals 0 here. x equals 0, then it, this is a 0. And 0 means that cosine 0 means C2. And <coughs> C2 will C4, right? C4 disappears. So C2 and C3 will be 0. C2 plus C3 will be 0. That is the uh, from equation uh, boundary condition 1 and boundary condition 2 and boundary condition um, 3 and 4. That's the equation we, we have. Now, well, the procedure was that general function, general solution V which is in terms of a full integration, integration constant, 
and we had a four boundary condition, and that's why we ha have a four equation. Linear in terms of C. So just for the convenience, we remember, the, the pay, uh, look at here, C2, 3, C1, 4, and C1, 2, 1, 2. So we change this four equation using, I mean, in terms of uh, this matrix equation. So for so C2 plus C3 can be uh, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And second equation, C1, C4. So uh, this one we simply replace by P over EI root. And this will be uh, just, we say, lambda, and lambda there, and C1 times C4, it will be 1, and so on and so on. And this is the 4 by 4 matrix equation. And unknown will be C1, 2, 3, one, two, three 4. And equal to, equal to what? Equal to, on the right-hand side, what is this? All zeros. So A, B equals zero. How to solve this equation? We don't have to solve it, right? C, everything is a zero. Then this zero, 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 zero will satisfy this equation, right? That is called mathematically mathematically called trivial solution. That solution we're not interested in. That solution zero 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 means that V is a simply zero, right? V is a simply zero. Means that when we apply load, it just stay there. No deflections. That is the solution for I mean before before Buckley. The solution we are interested in is that non-zero, non-zero solutions. C1, 2, 3, 4, non-zero solution. How to get the condition to have non-zero C1, 2, 3, 4? What's the condition? Anybody knows? What is the condition to have non zero C one, two, three, four? Huh? Yes, determinant of this four by four matrix should be zero. Determinant zero. What does determinant zero mean? Well, simply it is a four equation. If four equation is uh, independent, I mean rank of this equation is four, then C1, 2, 3, 4 will be simply zero. But determinant zero means that at least one of the equation is uh, depend on others, then this C1, 2, 3, 4 can have a non-zero solution. And that is the condition C equals zero a trivial solution determinant A is not uh, is a condition to have uh, non-zero solutions so uh, you give us this you simply give us the determinant of that one okay determinant of that one give us this one and to have this one as zero simply this term needs to be a cosine something equal zero what does it mean this one should be Express in terms of integer like that, and here, okay, this is a final uh, uh, conclusion. Here, p critical should be given as the sum value, integer value, pi square over four ei over l square. Non-zero solution. This calls non-zero solution. What does non-zero solution means? Non-zero solution means that it, it buckle, it, it deviate, right? So what, what 
Das caused that one. This much critical load caused that one. Okay, so uh, critical load given again some constant. Okay, you don't have to remember this constant, but e i divided by l square. That is the one thing you need to uh, understand. e i divided by l square. Okay. This is one of the final exam. e i divided by l square, and there is the constant. That constant. Well, it may depends on boundary conditions. Uh, in other words, say uh, this is the uh, simple support, and then you have this one, and it may buckle like that, or it clamped, and it apply force, and it buckle like, uh, sorry, it's not like that. It buckles like that, and as you can see here, this mode and that mode is uh, totally different. And the P critical load is the always given in terms of this one. Some constant, C constant, uh, determined from this boundary condition or that boundary conditions. But uh, always is a term EI divided by L square means that if you double increase the length then this is column this is structure will easily buckle right rather than short one short one you apply load the is uh, very uh, relatively stable and critical load should be very much high and again, if you have a very much a thick beam, which means relate to an eye, and if you have a very thick and very short, then P critical load will be very high, right? And if you have a very slender, very long, then this is a small, this is a large, which makes P critical load is very low. And you don't want that, right? You want to increase the critical load and to strongly support compressive load. Anyhow, anyhow you, you, we cannot avoid this buckling load. And you should understand the derivation procedure. And it is not quite uh, straightforward, but the key point is that not to, the, the condition to have, have a non-trivial solution and okay this is the final slide last slide and this is the uh, clamped and the coefficient is the pi square over 4 ei by r square when l is l is a short then critical buckle load p becomes very large as you can see here and failure will occur before buckling happens, buckling occurs. In other words, oops. this one is a column and is a relatively short, right? It's not long, it's very short. And whenever I compress, it does not buckle. You can tell, right? You can feel that it uh, does not buckle. It rather fail, you know, crush material buckling. You know the uh, the compress um, yield strength. Whenever you reach the yield strength, it it fails rather than buckling. But imagine that this one is very long, and we compress before material fail. It buckles, right? So you have to understand whether it is the material failure, which is the, you know, uh, uh, yield strength and, and um, bond misses criterion, and whether it is the uh, buckle. You need to uh, understand the difference.
So here is the plot and p versus length, p versus length. If p l is very uh, long, if l is very long, then always p failure p is controlled by this buckling. Remember, there's l scale is the l scale curve for long slender member we have a l scale and this one so uh, whenever you have a length this is the limit this is a limit for the compressive load you can apply now it's getting shorter and shorter okay shorter and shorter and this one you the buck and uh, failure load is uh, simply cross-sectional area times strength. So th this is the uh, failure load. And larger one, you have this one. So actually, this figure is a little confusing. And I'll, I should say simply this and, and that, something like that. OK? And this line. Where this line comes from? This line comes from um, A times sigma yield, right? And this equation simply comes from P equal C times E i L square. And as you can see here, I will call L star is some uh, length if length is longer than this, then buckling failure. If L is the shorter than this L star, then material failure. Right? So uh, I'm telling you how to calculate L star. How to calculate L star. Keep that in mind. How to calculate L star. Well, as you can see here, simply a sigma yield equals C E I L square. And from here, you can calculate L star. Again, if length is the less than or larger than, then here is the buckling, and here is the uh, uh, material failure. Okay, so this is the, uh, you need to consider when you design a, a column.